Hi, this is a follow-up on the biohybrid, the four-wheeled electric-assisted pedal, bicycle or quadricycle that I made a video about about a year ago on this channel. So some things have changed. Uh, the price of the biohybrid is now known. Uh, the prospects of the company may not be kind of um, going ahead. And they've talked a bit about the battery technology that they're going to use. So I'm going to talk about those three things in this video and respond to some of the comments, the top comments on that previous video that now has about 92,000 views as of filming this video. Okay, so when I made that previous video, the price that the biohybrid was going to be wasn't known. So some people were guessing like 5,000 euros. Some people were thinking it was going to be a bit higher, including me in the video. I was kind of speculating in that direction. But the price that they announced for the sort of introduction edition was 9,490 euros, including taxes for the passenger duo version, which I'll put on the screen now, and 11,390 euros for the pickup edition, which has a kind of load bed on the back. And then it was an additional 1,180 euros, it's become known, if you want another battery. So if you want the double battery version to double the range. And that was by far the kind of, and continues to be the top comment on that video. So I actually reached out to Biohybrid and got the sort of official reply as to why the price of the Biohybrid is the price that it is. And they say the following, with a lot of engineering expertise and high quality standards, we've developed a completely new vehicle, even a new category of mobility. The Biohybrid's a premium product designed and engineered in Germany with components specially developed for the vehicle. Additionally, it has many other advantages compared to conventional high-priced premium e-bikes. And I ride a kind of high-priced premium e-bike, uh, which you can see in my other videos. Weather protection, stability, um, safety, uh, from that stability and, and from, you know, compared to a normal bicycle, the fact that it's got lights, comfort, and it's got this kind of digital connectivity. So I also asked them, in light of people thinking the price might be a bit too high, will the price come down in future? Now, they wouldn't kind of comment on future developments and future pricing. I guess that's fair enough. Um, and they did say that there are incentives available, particularly in Germany, which is the first market for the biohybrid. These could knock, I believe, like 25% off the price with some new federal ministry for the environment uh, incentive. And there are other incentives at other kind of levels within Germany. A third question I put to them based on comments in that last video was, is the biohybrid too big? Will it annoy other road users and other bicycle lane users? Now, this comment is not something I could particularly associate with being based here in Denmark, because a lot of people ride, including me, these big kind of family cargo e-bikes, and they take up the whole bicycle lane anyway, and they're pretty much the same dimensions as the biohybrid. I thought the interesting thing that they said is that they see the problem as they're not being more and more cargo bikes on cycle lanes, but they say the real problem is the huge amount of space consumed by roads and parking spaces for cars. Cargo bikes are downsizing. They replace car journeys. Cities around all around the world urgently need more space for cycling and also for foot traffic. So their aim is by 2030 to see new alternative mobility concepts, such as the biohybrid, accounting for a significant share of this kind of modal split in mobility patterns. The fourth question I put to them then, based on the comments, was is it underpowered? Will it go up hills? You know, will it go up hills carrying two people? Their response was that the biohybrid has a completely new pedelec drive system with two motors and has good thrust. As they say, create remarkable thrust. The maximum continuous rated power is limited to 250 watts under European Union regulations. Uh, viewers in the USA might be used to different regulations, including the Class 3, which I think allows 750 watt and um, driving off the throttle and so on. We don't have that here in the European Union, although you can have speed pedelecs which require separate sort of conditions. They say the biohybrid achieves a high starting torque and features drive off assistance up to six kilometers an hour. So I guess if you're on a slope, you could use that kind of assistance. It's not a throttle, but it is a kind of starting assistance. And then they've also done some work, I guess, in Germany, because they say in Germany, the maximum ascent allowed for the access to an underground car park is 15% incline, and the biohybrid climbs that. So I guess they've tested that. And then they say, of course, well, if there's, you know, steep inclines, it will affect the speed of the biohybrid. I'd love to test that. Whether that becomes possible or not, we'll see, depending on the prospects of biohybrid. Another top comment has been about, you know, weather protection. Is it enough weather protection? Will it have doors? Biohybrid's response was, thanks to the fact that it has this kind of underbody and as well as the kind of roof and the windscreen, is that you do get quite a lot of weather protection anyway. So they say the rider remains almost dry in all weather conditions from their testing. They do say an optional door system that further increases weather protection is being planned, uh, but they ask for patience because they're still carrying out tests regarding design and material. Another question I asked was, where can you park it? And they say you can park it anywhere you park a normal bicycle. They also point out that increasing numbers of cities are designating parking spaces for electric vehicles and cargo bikes like the biohybrid. Um, I've seen this, I think, on their website. There's like a parking sign for cargo bikes now that you see in Germany. 
nothing like that in Denmark yet, as far as I'm aware, but designated for parking for electric cargo bikes or cargo bikes. And they note that the biohybrid only takes up a third of the space of a car. A few comments then have been about whether it's easy to kind of steal it or vandalize it. And they say the biohybrid has what they call a holistic security concept. So it has an anti-theft mechanism. You'll be able to lock and unlock it. And I guess check the status on that with an app. Um, it's also planned that the biohybrid will have an alarm if it's lifted or moved without permission, and it can be GPS tracked. Then the last two questions I put to them was, you know, will it be legal in particular specific countries that people in the comments are always going to call out where they're interested in or where they live, and then when can they buy it? Um, in terms of the legality, they're developing it very specifically for Germany at the moment, the kind of first hopeful market for it, and it complies with all EU directives there and all national legislation. And then they may be able to make later optional country specific product adaptations. And in terms of when uh, you can buy it, it's still available to put like a deposit down on the mo at the moment, a reservation. Um, and then they'll be thinking about other countries in the future, but they've got other issues to deal with at the moment. Then since I made the last video, more has become known about the battery. A few people were asking about the battery and what it might be. So they've revealed that it's a 48 volt system, 25 amp hours, 23 centimeters by 15 centimeters by 24.2 centimeters. So like a kind of stacked A4 piece of paper, I guess, sort of about this sort of sized cube. Um, it weighs nine kilograms for each of the 1.2 kilowatt hour batteries. These go under the seat. It wasn't clear in the by the time I made the previous video exactly where the battery might be, but they go under the seat and there's space for two. They're splash and dust proof, which as you can see by the image on the screen, they look kind of fairly well sealed. Um, the two batteries, one battery will give you up to 50 kilometers of range or 31 miles. Two will give you 100 kilometers or 62 miles. Uh, the interesting thing is it comes with a 10 amp charger. Um, now that I guess would be great for charging a fairly big battery in a reasonable amount of time. Not sure that that would work in Denmark. That might be one of these things that might need a country specific adaptation. Because I think there's a six amp limit on domestic plug sockets. I'm not so sure about that. Um, but you can charge it in the vehicle or you can charge, take the batteries out and charge them, you know, in a house or something. And it just says manufacturer branded lithium ion. So I guess they're not ready to say which manufacturer that is. Uh, they now say the bike has a curb weight of 120 kilograms. So I guess with two batteries, it would be 129 kilograms and a 400 kilogram maximum load. So I guess if that includes the weight of the vehicle, you could put in a kind of 280 kilograms of cargo, including the passengers. So that's a bit of an update then with more details and replying to the comments that were on the previous biohybrid video I put out, which I didn't expect to get so much interest and so many comments, and it continues to get them, particularly about the price. Uh, now the price is a bit of a sticking point because a lot of people have indicated that they feel that it's too high. I've given kind of biohybrids view on this, and I ride a fairly kind of premium German Riesel Muller e-bike, a, a speed e-bike at the moment, and you know, the pricing is only a few thousand euros off that. Those are very expensive bikes, hand built and so on. And, uh, you know, aluminum frames and kind of premium components and so on. So it wasn't too much of a surprise for me, the price when it came out, but I think a lot of people wish it would be lower. Um, anyway, regardless of that, in 22nd of April, 2021, there's a press release on the Biohybrid website now, which people recently in the comments have been flagging that Biohybrid uh, on its own behalf uh, initiated a filing with the Nuremberg District, District Court for insolvency. So they say that their operations continue within the scope of this insolvency agreement, and their objective is to undertake a successful restructuring of the startup, and they continue a search for investors under insolvency law protection. Although I don't know how long that is for, because I'm not a legal expert of any kind or making any financial recommendations about investing in biohybrid or any other company. I don't have any vested interests or any kind of insider information. That's, that's, people should look into that as to what that actually means. They plan to continue the restructuring they've already initiated and complete it by around about now when I'm making this video, the kind of beginning of July. They are continuing negotiations with potential investors apparently to complete development of the biohybrid and bring the innovative Pedelec to market. Their earlier final discussions with investors were delayed on account of the pandemic related restrictions. No doubt many, many startups and many established businesses have been facing these kind of financial and other kind of difficulties at the moment with the restrictions around the pandemic, particularly something like this, where they were moving from prototype, I think, to production vehicles, and they wanted to sort out what the production vehicle would look like and what components it would have and so on. Anyway, so they say that this was delayed on account of the restrictions, which resulted in the future financing of the startup of Biohybrid no longer being secured. However, they're still accepting reservations and customers apparently face no risk as their down payment would be returned if no develop delivery is made. I'm not making any recommendation about that or the level of actual risk, but this is what they're saying in their statement. Okay, so what are my thoughts on this, on the kind of price and the prospects of the company and the battery tech then? 
Well, on the price, it doesn't bother me too much. It is a bit high, but I can see how any company wanting to do something, you know, original, and it looks like they've got a fair amount of kind of bespoke or specialized or newly developed components and systems in this bicycle. There's going to be a research and development cost to that, no doubt. Um, whether that company sort of, you know, did too much research and development, could have developed something simpler. I don't know. I don't know their internal strategies and so on. I think they were aiming for something convincing, high quality, premium, safe, appealing. Um, a lot of comments on the previous video, you know, people liked it. They wanted it to be cheaper, but they liked it. They liked the concept. They liked the design. They thought it looked cool. You know, they could see themselves owning one. I think for me, a lot of the prospects would be in the kind of uh, delivery and cargo versions of it. I've seen the, the Swedish Velo Armadillo around and they seem to be doing fairly well as a company working with kind of logistics and cargo and delivery. And that's a four wheel electric assisted pedelec. So I guess biohybrid could have prospects there. And it would be great to see, you know, not having petrol or diesel vehicles going around doing these kind of last mile deliveries and this kind of logistics, because there's you know, often no need for it, um, I would say. There is obviously risk with developing a kind of new form of mobility, and it's kind of sad to see that they're in possible difficulties and that the biohybrid might not make it. I also note it, it kind of uh, it worried me a little bit when I kind of saw this and also saw another development in the UK with a company that I mentioned in the last biohybrid video, DryCycle, that they seem to be now auctioning off all of their prototypes and parts and the development vehicles that they've made so far. Now, I commented on that, that I didn't like the design of it. That wasn't to say that it wasn't an innovative, useful and valid thing for them to be doing. Um, but they apparently have struggled with kind of getting interest on reservations. And now they're just, it seems to be they're auctioning off the parts. Um, maybe that was even yesterday or the day before at the time of making this video. But it really made me worry that this kind of new category of like a kind of stable four-wheeled electric assisted bicycle or quadricycle with some kind of full or partial weather protection, the kind of thing I would love to have around, love to just sort of pop to the shops in it, love to take my kids to school in it, love to go out sort of touring in it and just sort of park it somewhere and get in and out of it really conveniently and drive, you know, drive it off right away. Um, without too much of the kind of theft worries and, and you know, weather and stability worries of a two-wheeled bicycle, as much as I've grown to like those being in Denmark. It worried me that that kind of development of those kind of vehicles is, you know, stalled for now around, you know, difficulties with the cost of developing new something like that, around customer opinions on the price. And I think it would be very sad to lose this kind of new category that's somewhere between, you know, some sort of midway between a car and a bicycle. It's something different. And I think often there's, there's a conservatism and a, and a sort of, um, I don't know, resistance around things that seem new like that. And some comments on the last video, were, oh, who needs this kind of thing? Why, should it, why does it look like that? Why does it have to be like that? Why does anyone need this kind of thing? And I think that's a shame because the current things we know as bicycles and cars haven't been around forever. There are particular designs and technologies that were developed and evolved and they've developed a lot of you know, engineering expertise and cost savings and costs of sale that mean they could bring the price down. But, you know, the, the kind of counterpart of that has been enormous uh, environmental impact and carbon footprints that are causing, you know, climate change crisis and so on. And I think there's space to develop something new in this kind of zero tailpipe emissions, electric vehicle mobility space. So I would like to see, you know, these companies, particularly biohybrid, succeed and bring their product to market. I would be interested in it if it became available where I lived. I'd love to test one. And I really think this whole thing about electric vehicles, I used to drive an electric car, it's a really interesting pioneering development and a kind of bright light towards something, um, meaning that we can have the kind of mobility that, you know, is convenient, is comfortable, is safe, is fun, but also doesn't have such a, a huge impact. Like my electric cargo bike that I rode uh, my, my son back and forth to school in, it uses like less than a tenth of the most efficient electric car in its most efficient operation. You know, we're talking about 10 watt hours per kilometer or something ridiculously low like that, uh, compared to things in the hundreds for full size cars, you know, which if you're doing something within a city, commuting or something like that, you're doing the same kind of functional mobility purpose. And there's surely a space for something like this. So anyway, yeah, that's an update on biohybrid. I'll make another video if more becomes known about their prospects. I hope they do make it. As I say, I've got no vested interest in saying that. It's just to see something innovative make it, I think is always good. It's a shame someone like Sandy Munro or something who's, who's been helping other startups in the electric vehicle space kind of learn about economies of scale and cutting weight and cutting numbers of components and cutting manufacturing you know, comple complexity and building in simplicity of these things to reduce prices. Uh, maybe someone like that will end up working with biohybrid or something like it. And maybe we'll see these kind of four wheeled 
safe, stable, fun, uh, small-scale electric vehicles coming forward. So that's the update about the biohybrid. I'll just say a quick word in a kind of blog way about what I've been up to. I haven't been making many videos this year. One of the reasons is that I've been riding my electric cargo bike like crazy. Between March and June, across those four months, I put 4,000 kilometers on it, taking my son back and forth a new school and still working from home. So it was there and back, there and back, uh, twice a day. 45 kilometers a day, 225 kilometers a week to one of the highest points in the city and back, and it just burnt me out, basically. So I haven't had much energy for making videos. I hope to do more in future, so subscribe if you'd like to see what's coming. Um, I'll do a separate video about that particular cargo bike experience and how someone like me who hasn't cycled for like 30 odd years before moving to Denmark takes on something like that and what I've learned from it. Um, yeah, and beyond that, I've been doing some touring on my other electric bike that I bought specifically for just sort of, you know, journeying and adventuring around. Been having a lot of fun with that even though I bought that in the depths of winter. So this is the first summer now that uh, I'm really going to get out and try it. Um, I still remember kind of walking there in the darkness of kind of middle December um, to the shop, walking there because of the pandemic, I didn't want to take a bus. And uh, yeah, arriving in the dark in the shop and riding home in the dark with the new bike and so on. And now I'm actually getting the long summer days and really enjoying that. It's been really fun. And again, for me, someone who's a, an EV driver mainly, and has become a kind of electric cyclist since moving to Denmark. So yeah, so that's the update in the biohybrid and a little bit about what's been going on in our lives. And uh, hope to see you in a future video. Please subscribe if you'd like to and bye for now.